going to talk about logistic regression. And the name comes from a statistic, and that is because uh, the mathematical formulation of logistic regression is similar to that of linear regression. And uh, one thing that you need to, give, to know is that although logistic regression sounds like a regression algorithm, it's actually a classification algorithm. Uh, here, I'm going to talk about the case of a binary classification. However, it can naturally be extended to multi-class uh, classification. Uh, in logistic regression, we still want, I mean, similar to linear regression, we still want to model yi as a linear function of xi. However, with a binary yi, this is not as a straightforward. The linear combination of features such as wxi plus b that we had before is a function that spans from minus infinity to plus infinity, whereas in this specific problem that we're dealing with, binary classification, binary, uh, yi has only two possible values. And uh, at the time where the absence of computers required scientists to perform manual calculations, they were eager to find a linear classification model. They figured out that if they define negative labels as zero and positive labels as one, uh, then they just need to find a simple continuous function with a codomain of 0 to 1. And in such a case, if the value returned by the model for input x is closer to 0, then they would assign a negative label to x, otherwise they would label it as positive. And if you remember from your high school mathematics or your mathematics that you did in your bachelor's studies, one function that has that property is actually the standard logistic function. It's also called a sigmoid function and this is what you're seeing here. And this is 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus z in this picture as you see here. So the value is between 0 and 1. So they found their uh, model basically, their function basically. And when we're talking about logistic regression, it looks something like that f of wb of x is equal 1 over 1 plus e to the power my, minus wx plus b and this is where we get our linear familiar linear regression wx plus b so this is somewhat where the name comes from logistic regression by looking at the graph of a standard logistic function uh, we can see how well it fits our classification purposes if we optimize the value w and p b appropriately, we could interpret the output of f of x as the probability of y i being positive. For example, if it is higher or equal to the threshold 0.5, we should say that the class is positive, otherwise it's negative. So let me say this once again. The thing we are dealing with here is that we want to classify a set of data into two classes, 0, 1, binary. But we have a linear regression continuous function. The best thing we can do is to find if the predicted value is closer to 0 or closer to 1, and then this is where logistic regression function comes in. It is somewhat probability, probability of belonging to class 1 or probability of belonging to class 0. Uh, and of course in practice I said the threshold is 0.5 but in practice the choice of the threshold could be different depending on the problem. Uh, if you remember in linear regression we minimize the empirical risk uh, by using the loss function if you remember use the average square error loss also known as mean squared error or MSC, as we already discussed. In logistic regression, on the other hand, we maximize the likelihood of our training set according to the model. In statistics, the likelihood function defines how likely the observation, our example, is according to our model. For example, uh, let's have a labeled example in our training data and assume that we all already found or guessed some values for W and B, 
and now if we apply our model we would get some value between 0 and 1 if by i if our target if our perceived output is the positive class the likelihood of uh, the output being in the positive class according to our model is given, given by p basically this is what the p is telling us how likely it is that that value belongs to the po positive class uh, similarly if y is negative then the likely likelihood is given by 1 minus p uh, the optimization criterion here is called logist is called maximum li likelihood and instead of minimizing the average loss like in linear regression we now maximize the likelihood of the training data according to uh, our model as you see here we have different distributions based on uh, the different models that we have and this dotted line is actually is giving us the likelihood uh, of each data point. Uh, I'm going to skip the mathematics here, but keep in mind that contrary to linear regression, there is no closed form solution to the above optimization problem. A typical numerical optimization procedure used in such classes, in, in such cases, is gradient descent. And we are going to talk about gradient descent, so no fret there, don't worry about that. But you need uh, your takeaway message here is that uh, basically, uh, the optimization uh, approach is different but, uh, from, uh, from what we had in linear regression. We are using the maximum likelihood, how close to the predicted value it could be. Okay, and that's it. Soon we got to the practice time. Let's see how coding actually looks with logistic regression. The logistic regression problem that we are solving here, it's an iris data set. This is a very famous data set that used in many different machine learning ex examples. If you haven't seen it yet, it's probably time to explore it. And it is freely available uh, on sklearn. And I'm also having a copy here that I'm going to load it to this notebook and I'm going to work on that. And as always, I'm just importing the libraries and packages that I find useful here. And they are the uh, usual suspects. So let's uh, get to work and let's import the data set. The data set is in CSV format, iris data, and I'm going to define the set of features and the target, which is our yeah, the, the value that we want to predict. Yes. And as we did in linear regression, again, we need to split the data set into training and testing data set. And just for the fun of it, I changed the value here now. I keep 75% of the data for the training data set and the rest for the testing data set. I also standardize the feature that we have. I'm scaling them here. Okay. And as ever, it's easy. We uh, first initialize our model, which is logistic regression, and then we fit the model on our training data set. Okay. So we have a fitted model. We want to see how good our model is working. Basically, we are predicting the test result by applying our predict our uh, our model. Uh, using our model to predict the values in X test and then we're going to sh uh, we build a table these are all for visualization to see how good the prediction is okay as you see here this column represents the Y test the actual values and the predicted values and you see this is exactly what I was saying that uh, logistic regression gives you a value the probability of belonging to different classes so for example in this first one Virginica uh, 95 uh, 97 percent our model predicted that it's going to be Virginica and not so much in the other classes that is why the model decided that it is a Virginica and uh, the same is uh, valid for the other ones but this is not always as high like I mean it's 75 percent or 69% here is still good enough and it predicted correctly, but it doesn't need always to be over 90%. So 
So you see this is how uh, the logistic regression works in practice and that's quite easy.